Eczema laser tuberculostomy, ELT, is a novel, minimally invasive procedure for the treatment of open angle glaucoma. ELT utilizes a 308 nanometer xenon chloride eczema laser to provide a precise and essentially non-thermal approach for the restoration of natural aqueous outflow in the eye. ELT has been approved for use in the European Union since 1998. This video will describe the ELT experience of one patient, ED, a 73-year-old female. ED had a pre-op intraocular pressure of 28 millimeters of mercury in her right eye on maximally tolerated medications. She underwent ELT in May 2003 in Detmold, Germany. The AIDA laser system consists of a 308 nanometer eczema laser coupled to disposable fiber optic delivery systems. Each fiber has a 200 micron diameter and a beveled tip. Each fiber tip output fluence is calibrated immediately prior to use to assure non-thermal delivery with a mean pulse energy of 1.2 millijoules. ELT can be performed with the use of gonial lens or an endoscope. Following peribulbar or topical anesthesia, the surgeon creates a paracentesis incision and stabilizes the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. The sterile cannula is passed through the paracentesis, extends across the anterior chamber to contact the trabecular meshwork. Under gonioscopic control, in this case using a swan Jacob lens, the fiber tip is centered on the pigmented trabecular meshwork in the inferior nasal quadrant. In cases where pigmented region cannot be visualized by the surgeon, Schlem's canal is approximated to the mid-aspect of the trabecular meshwork. The laser is then activated, delivering laser pulses at 20 hertz per treatment site, maintaining constant manual pressure on the fiber, non-thermally turning the trabecular meshwork tissue into gas, similar to corneal LASIK, creating openings into Schlem's canal. The endpoint of each trabeculostomy site is reached by the absorption of a fixed number of laser pulses calculated to excise an average thickness of trabecular meshwork plus inner wall of Schlem's canal. The requisite number of laser pulses was determined by previous laser tissue interaction studies. Following each opening, the fibers repositioned and energy applied for a total of under current protocol 10 trabeculostomy sites per eye. Patency of the laser induced openings is demonstrated by slight blood reflux from Schlem's canal. This is shown by the arrow. Upon completion, the fiber is removed and the viscoelastic exchanged with balanced salt solution. The trabeculostomy sites are monitored for blood reflux by lowering intraocular pressure temporarily to demonstrate their continuity into Schlem's canal. Once intraocular pressure is normalized, the outflow is into the canal. The paracentesis incisions are hydrated and topical antibiotic steroid drops are instilled. One day postoperative, ED's intraocular pressure was reduced from 28 to 21 millimeters of mercury. Postoperative gonioscopy reveals visible laser induced effects within the trabecular meshwork. Initially, the holes appear round but tend to become more oval with slight pigmentation around the edges. Five years post ELT, a majority of patients continue to have visible crater openings into Schlem's canal. The openings that do not appear to be patent are most often either misplaced and not well targeted to reach Schlem's canal or lack sufficient depth to enter Schlem's canal. This is why the current protocol is 10 applications. In several patients, blood reflux through the ostea from Schlem's canal can be induced with pressure from a gonial lens at one, two, and even three years post-DLT, further validating persistent patency. At her one-year exam, ED's intraocular pressure without glaucoma medications was 12 millimeters of mercury, a 57% reduction. One year after her ELT surgery, ED underwent routine cataract surgery. At this time, prior to lens removal, Tripan Blue was inserted into the anterior chamber and allowed to flow out. In the region of normal trabecular meshwork, minimal Tripan Blue was seen in the aqueous veins. However, in the region of the ELT surgery, much more Tripan Blue was noted in the aqueous veins as indicated by the arrow, suggesting an enhanced level of outflow in the region of the eczema the laser of trabeculostomies. In the nasal inferior quadrant is even more obvious in this case. This should prove that pneumatic canaloplasty is an interesting potential benefit noted during ELT procedures. 
the gas created as a result of the photoablation of trabecular meshwork tissue forms bubbles in the tissue and in the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. When the ablation of the trabecular meshwork penetrates the outflow obstruction, the gas is able to enter Schlem's canal through the new openings in the trabecular meshwork. Observing the gas bubbles exiting the adjacent openings confirms continuity of flow, presumably via Schlem's canal, as seen by the arrows. This gas is proposed to dilate Schlem's canal and local collector channels. Pneumatic dilation process of the trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, and collector channels may augment lowering intraocular pressure. ELT has been shown to be a safe and effective treatment for opening a glaucoma and has been performed on thousands of patients at multiple centers across Europe. No serious complications have been reported. The conjunctiva and globe are left intact. No foreign bodies are implanted. The trabecular meshwork is minimally altered. ELT is not contraindicated in eyes with prior surgeries and leaves the eye intact for future possible procedures. ELT can be performed in phacic and in pseudophagic patients. Most commonly, ELT is performed concurrently with lensectomy, with effective additional IOP lowering compared to lensectomy alone. We anticipate the second generation ELT devices will be available in the United States in the very near future. Thank you.